Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Um, welcome. Just want to thank you all for subscribing, um, checking in on me and um, sharing and liking. Um, today I decided to talk to you about the article I read in The Guardian a couple of days ago. I think it was on the 14th of May. Uh, one of the journalists were talking about the new ad campaign for Universal Credit and it's supposed to cost them £250,000. This is DWP, so you know it's taxpayers' money. So it's going to cost them £250,000 to put a wrapper outside the free Metro newspaper and four advertorial pages. Now, the only reason he knows this is because um, he works in the department and it came on his desk and stuff like that. I'll put a link in anyway, so you can check its authenticity of what I'm saying. Now... You know, what puzzles me is that the DWP, they're concerned that people are not going to apply because of all the scaremongering and because of all the negative remarks. I mean, you know, people have committed suicide. People are homeless. People are using food banks. You know, they've lost their jobs. So you're bound, regardless of whether it's five, ten 15 or 20 out of millions. The thought that that could happen to anybody, of course it's scary. Now, why I'm confused is why would they put, uh, why would they want to promote people applying for universal credit when they don't want them? They don't want, really want to give them the money. They don't really um, help them find constructive jobs that can stabilize them and help them pay their bills and keep their homes so why do they want them to um, apply for universal credit such that they're willing to spend two hundred and fifty thousand pounds for a nine week ad does that make sense to you now either it's because they want that 5.5 families, apparently 5.5 million families are due to go on universal credit. Is it because they want their information? Do they want to add their information to the data system? Because remember, we are talking about a system that is being governed by um, Big Brother. And yes, they can find out a lot of things through your phone, through your laptop. But universal credit allows them access to much more personal detail. So you can imagine if they've got all of that personal detail on their systems, how valuable that is to them. So I can't see any other reason for the worrying that people are not going to apply for universal credit other than them worrying that they're not going to get people's information. So they don't want them to kind of not want to apply. They want them to apply, but they don't want to give them jobs. Or they'll give them jobs, but not jobs that can sustain them. So, And what is the point? You know, it's different if you haven't got anything at all and you've never had anything and you've always struggled. But I hear that there are some people who are better off. I don't know who those people are. But for some reason, the elderly and the disabled are the ones who are suffering. Now, you know, the other day I came home, um, I went to London and I went to London on the Saturday. Somebody had jumped in front of a train. I came back on the Sunday evening. The train had stopped. This is two weeks ago because somebody had jumped in front of a train. Now, we're living in a time where people are so vulnerable and afraid and destitute. We don't know why people are jumping in front of trains, but the fact that, you know, money is one of those things that everybody needs to, to, to meet their basic needs. You need to eat. You need a roof over your head. You know what I mean? And if that's being taken away from you, they reckon, you know, I was reading um, this article where an 81 year old lady, she had got she had saved five thousand pounds and she had up until that point she was getting um pension credit and then um they stopped her pension credit but inadvertently stopped her pension as well and they never put it back on and so she she ended up with five pounds in her account 
and jumped over a quarry in Wales. How sad is that? I mean, I feel choked just thinking about it. You know, they were talking about this d disabled man who who had gone to um, try to get his benefits, but it had been cut, and the delay was so long, he was losing his home, he was a single parent. And these are not uh, make-believe. These are real-life stories about affecting people, ordinary working people, or ordinary people, regardless of whether they're working. So it's fine for the DWP to say, you know, there was negative messages going out. But even if one person dies because they've been deprived, unfairly deprived of not having money, that's one person too, much, too many. And if all these people are in food banks because of the delays, that, those are just too many. There shouldn't be anybody who is worse off, especially if they're working and they're trying to build up their income. So, um, what was I going to say? I just, I just find it so um, alarming that in this time there's people who have been forced through no fault of their own to have to claim benefits and they're subjugated, they're made to feel as though it's a crime to claim because that is what it's like. It's like it's a crime. They are being punished for claiming or being made to feel punished because of all the stipulations and because of all the stringent, hard-to-reach targets. Amber Rudd, she was the one uh, responsible for the Windrush scandal and she had to resign. She's now head of this DWP and she's now saying, oh, you know, a lot of people have um, a worse off. And, you know, at, you know, attending, I'm sorry, I keep saying, you know, you know, you know, but it's a habit. Um, they're attending food banks. You know, in this day and age, food banks is supposed to be for the homeless. Well, these people are homeless. Even people are working are being forced to go to um, food banks. The National Audit Office, who oversees the spending of public bodies, says UK has not saved money or put the universal credit has not saved money or put people in jobs. That's the National Audit Office. I don't know how much power they have to do something about that. They did a fantastic report on the Windrush scandal, but I don't know what comes out of it. Is it just a tick box exercise? Are they just there to do the report, but, you know, nothing comes out of it? Um, they, uh, they, apparently they've deferred the rollout. I think it was supposed to be 2021 when it was going to be finally, finally rolled out. But because of all of these problems, they've extended it to 2023. I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. Um, what else was I going to say? 5.5 million households, I was watching Question Time the other day, are going to be due, they're due, I don't know for what reason, to be applying for universal credit. I don't know how they can anticipate who's going to be applying for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just think it's a sad state of affairs. And like I said, I'm not quite sure why this advert is going out. Um, they reckon over two and a half million look at or read the Metro. The fact that it's going to be on the front cover. Apparently the um, logos are not going to be there. The DWP logo is not going to be there. Or the Universal Credit logo is not going to be there. It's supposed to make them look attractive. Why do they want to look attractive? Why does Universal Credit want to look attractive? Why do they want people to go and degrade themselves? Because that is how they make them feel. They make them feel degraded. I don't understand why they'd want to attract people to do that. You know, I'm sorry for all those people who are struggling. Hopefully we hear some positive stories about universal credit, but I haven't heard one. I mean, normally you don't, you only hear the bad news because these are the people who are so desperate. You know, people with children, so they're speaking out more. I guess people who are getting their allowance, they've got no reason to speak out, but... We know, but we do need to hear some positive stories about this universal credit, because right now, apparently, the po the positive stories that we do hear 
are, are by paid actors, according to um, this vlogger called Mark My Words. So I don't know. I, I just don't know. I just want people to kind of be able to at least eat, meet their basic needs as per uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, the base needs are water, food, a roof over your head. Those are your basic needs. And then you can go up to, you know, whether or not you have, you know, comfort or company or a job and security and all that kind of stuff. But your basic needs should be met. You shouldn't be in a position where you're losing your house. For, that must be the worst. Can you imagine? You've lived in your house. You don't know if you, you, I mean, you probably paid, nearly paid for it or you've been paying for it. And then you don't have the money to pay your mortgage or your rent. Can you imagine how devastating that must be? Anyway, I've gone on enough. This is a weekend. We need to be a bit more uplifting. I hope I find something positive to talk about in the future, in the very near future. Um, in the meantime, I'll keep you posted on what's happening, any new legislations coming out that I think might affect you and that you might miss. And yeah, as long as it comes my way, it'll be going your way. Take care for now. Bye bye.